A Wee Iron Coffin Two police officers arrived by car just as the boys were dragging Herr Professor Dr. Major Melker out of the school. I sagged with relief. I'd saved him. But when the police saw the attackers were SRD boys, they pulled up short. This man is a defeatist, Fritz announced to the police officers. We're taking him to the Gestapo. The police backed off and let the boys drag Melker away down the street. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The police were adults. Didn't they see what was happening here? Wasn't somebody going to make the children behave? Not today. The police were scared. You could see it in the looks they gave each other, nervous glances that said, if we do or say anything, they'll come for us next. Idiots. Didn't anybody realize this was how Nazi Germany had gotten to be this way in the first place? I was about to say something, stand up to the SRD bullies, tell the police about Melker's son, tell them how Fritz and the other boys were wrong, break this spell of silence, but then I caught myself. If I said something, I might save Melker's life, but I would ruin everything else Simon and my parents and I had worked for. All our plans to smuggle Simon out with the blueprints. Even if Fritz didn't get me kicked out of the SRD, he would never invite me inside his house ever again. I would never get the last page of the jet plans. Germany would win the war, crush the Allies, conquer the world. And what would I have done besides save Herr Professor Dr. Major Melker's life? Again, I saw myself four years ago on the night of broken glass. But now I saw it through new eyes, the eyes of my parents. Saw the awful trade, one man's life against the fate of the entire world. My heart ached as if it were slowly eating me up from inside. Sometimes we have to sacrifice good people to win a war, Simon had told me. Sometimes you do what you have to do, even if doing it means doing something wrong. Melker's watery, desperate eyes found mine, and in that moment I knew. I knew that deep down he really hated the Nazis, and that he'd been faking his loyalty to them all this time. And he knew that I had been, too. Melker's eyes begged me to say something, to speak up for him, to save him. Instead, I said nothing. I locked my heart away in a wee iron coffin and swallowed the key. It burned going down, and tears stung my eyes, but still I said nothing. Herr Professor Dr. Major Melker closed his eyes and wept, but he didn't give me away. He understood, because, to his own shame, he'd been silent, too. I followed the boys to Gestapo headquarters, where they dumped the broken, blubbering body of Herr Professor Dr. Major Melker on the floor in front of the SS officer on duty. This man has forsaken the Fuhrer and is undermining our will to fight, Fritz told him. How Fritz, the youngest and smallest of them, had become the de facto leader of the group, I didn't know. A concentration camp is too good for him, Max cried. Put a rifle in his hands and send him to the Eastern Front, Fritz said. Maybe then he'll appreciate what he did to sabotage support for our soldiers while he was safe and warm back in Berlin. There were indignant nods of agreement all around. The SS officer called for men to come and take care of Professor Dr. Major Melker away. We'll take care of him, the SS man said. My heart banged against the door of the little box where I'd locked it away, but I didn't let it out. Nobody deserved what was about to happen to Melker, but I couldn't stop it. Not if I wanted to get the jet plane. But I died a little inside, too. You won't be needing another te a teacher any longer anyhow, the SS officer said, and suddenly he had everybody's attention. You won't have time for it. All Luftwaffe ground specialists have been redeployed re to active fighting, which means more duties will fall to the Hitler youth here at home. From now on, you boys will be manning the, manning the anti-aircraft guns during air raids.